y'all. I'm Elisa, the Scrappy Wife behind ScrappyWife.com, and today I have an art journal process video for you. I am working in my Dilutions art journal. I have a few entries in this one, and today I am wanting to do something with tissue paper or napkins. So I have like a whole box full of all kinds of tissue paper, um, and I'm wanting to do something with this, something with shapes. So we will see how that kind of comes out as I start working. I have my gesso pulled out and I think we're just gonna kind of jump in and see what happens. So I will link everything that I end up using down in the description box below. Otherwise I'll put you guys on fast forward. Let's go. I have a whole stack of black and white tissue paper that I've collected over the years and I'm going to use this old circle cutter. I believe this might be a Creative Memories circle cutter, but I'm going to use it to trace and cut out two sizes of circle from each set of tissue paper. And my idea was to kind of do a collage and I thought black and white would be a good starting point because of course I'm going to want to add color. I love color, so there's going to be a ton of that in here, but I like the idea of all of these different patterns coming together in a similar shape, and the fact that some of it is um, white in the background, I know that'll kind of um, fade into the background of the page, and so I think it'll turn out pretty well. So I'm just going to take a little bit of time here and finish cutting out this paper. Once all of the circles are cut out, I will open up my art journal. I want it to lay flat, so I'm trying to figure out the best page to do that. So I'll bend the spine right here. That'll lay flat. I'm going to use a large brush and clear gesso. I want to use clear because I want to be able to see through this paper. And all you need to do is put a little gesso down on the page, put the tissue paper on top, and then gesso over the top. The reason I'm using gesso instead of something like Mod Podge is because I don't want it to be sticky in the end and I have always found Mod Podge, even um, the ones that claim to be not sticky, to have a little bit of stick. So you can see all I'm doing is layering the different circles. I think it looks really cool in black and white. A part of me wishes that I had left it black and white. I'm not going to lie. I do like the color that is brought in and kind of the idea that it represents um, later on, but the black and white looked really cool. So I'm starting with the bigger circles. I'll layer in some of the smaller circles and I actually end up having um, some extra room that I want some more circles. So I will pull out some more tissue paper as we go and cut out some more so I can fill in some of the white space that is in the background that I really wanted to um, have be filled with a pattern just a bit more. So I'm going to bring in some more of the checked pattern because I like all of the black in this particular one and it's a pretty bold black. So I'll trim that out and add that in. I'm going to bring in more of the arrow pattern because I think that that is a cool kind of look to it. And then I'm actually going to take some time and trim off some of the edges of the other pieces that I already have on the paper that are hanging off and I can use those just like I do with stickers in a planner. When you have something hanging over the edge, trim it off. You can still use that little piece. I am always intrigued by the combination of different patterns and when you do it all in the same color scheme you can use a lot of different patterns all together and you can see how it mixes. You can kind of see some of the circles, you kind of can't see some of the other circles. I just find it really intriguing and inspiring. Like I said, I liked it in black and white. I maybe should have left it in black and white. You can let me know what you think in the comments below once you see um, what I continue to add to this. The black and white is super pretty for sure, um, but I end up deciding to do some color because what this is going to come to represent are ideas. So each of these circles is going to be an idea of sorts that is kind of being released into the world or taking flight, you might say. 
and to me ideas always seem colorful so I didn't want to leave them just black and white. All right, I'm trying to get this nice and dry to make the last few little trims that I need to make. Again, I'm being really careful in case I need to reuse any of these circles, but moving around the edge to trim it off. And then I let it dry really well before I move on to the next step because I am planning on adding some Distress Oxide ink over the top of this and um, I don't want it to be like a humongous mess. So I dry it some with the heat tool and I also let it sit for just a bit. I have picked out a piece of scrapbook paper from my Jane Davenport scrapbook pad. This is my second time to go through one of these pads. I love it. I love Jane Davenport's drawings and I find it really inspiring. And so I liked this lady with her red and her pinks. And I thought that she just looked like she knew something big was about to happen. Like she's looking off in the distance and she knows that something big is coming. And that was the idea behind this page is that um, she is releasing her ideas. And the title I give this um, are Her Ideas Begin to Take Flight. So what I'm doing is fussy cutting out to this character. She will be over in this corner and I'm going to start adding some ink. So I pull out some different Distress Oxide inks. I think the reason I wasn't totally pleased is because I didn't find a red that really worked well for the red that was in with this. You can see that looks kind of orange and I'm going to do two different circles. Idea is that each circle will be a different color. So I'm kind of going with it, but eventually I pulled out a different color. I ended up going with aged mahogany over these circles and I think it works much better in the end. So I'll just add some ink over the top of these. And once I kind of get some color on, then I go ahead and activate it with water. So I pull out a big water, a big paintbrush, get it wet with some clean water, and then go over around the edge, kind of activating it and pulling the color into the middle of each circle. This will create kind of a shade look. It doesn't really come across on camera, but it's definitely there. They're shading. Um, and it also starts the oxidation process, which gives it a chalky feel or a chalky look as well. So again, bringing that around the edge. I just, I think maybe it was the red that I really didn't like. And I should probably keep trying for a richer red because that one just wasn't doing it for me. I liked it a little bit better once it was wet. I did have some pooling on top of some of these because of the gesso that I used. So I just pull out a paper towel and just use that to soak up a few of the little um, pooling effects and take out some of the color in the middle of a circle. That way it lightens it up right in the middle. And I'm just going to continue with um, some different colors. So I went with a picked raspberry. I did chipped sapphire, a really dark blue. And I like the combination of the colors. I'm trying to match the colors that are in the Jane Davenport girl that I cut out. Um, and I think it comes along pretty nicely. My favorite color that I add is probably the dark purple that is going to come um, in just a minute. And it is just a really rich color. I'm thinking that I could have probably taken a little time and built up the colors a little bit more with the oxide inks. Um, but in the end, I mean, if they were all the same richness as the um, cutout was, as the big paper piece was, then you might have lost some impact from the paper piece. So I can see how, you know, it could work both ways. I actually end up leaving one circle black and white, and that was totally not on purpose. It's just how it ended up. All right, last pink color. This one is a super pink pink, which I think works really well. And I'm actually going to bring it over some of the red circles as well, just so I can get um, a different color because I wasn't, again, still not pleased with that red color. And then my girl is going to live over here. And I just have to get the whole thing dry before I put her on the paper. Before I put her down, I decided I want to do some shading behind her. So I have Hickory Smoke Distress Oxide, and I'm just going to add kind of some gray blending where I think she's going to go just at like her shadow in a way. I just thought it would help set her off a little bit. And then the other thing I'm going to do is get the black soot color and put that around the edges, like use that to rough up the edges of the actual paper piece. See how she's going to sit right there, making sure there's enough gray around her. And then I'll add a little bit of black ink around the piece. That way it just incorporates it a little bit more, roughs up the edges, gives it the shadow that I was going for. 
It was a little tricky to get on some of these edges. And I said this in another recent video, I think I need a smaller blending brush, like a detailed blend blending brush. I know they have those um, that you can use for card making and things like that. And I think that would probably come in handy for things like this, because it was just hard to get into some of the crevices that I wanted to get into in order to give this like a weathered worn look. But once I ink up the edges enough, then I will just use my Tombow Permanent Adhesive on the back and stick her on the page and she is ready to release her ideas. The last thing that I will end up doing for this page is hand lettering the title. I purposely wanted it to look a little bit messy, a little bit rough around the edges. So I didn't do my full on hand lettering, but I did do all capital letters for the word ideas so that it would really pop out from the rest. I first put it down with a pencil just to make sure I could get the spacing right. And then I go over it with a black paint pen um, to really bring it out on top of all of the gesso and the ink that I had already put down on the page. And that is going to be it for this art journal spread. If you liked this video, then please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button as well as the bell notification button. I will link all of the different supplies that I used down below so that you can check those out if you are interested. And I want to give a huge shout out to my scrappy patrons. So I just started a Patreon account in January of 2022 and I am just blown away by the support. If you're interested in finding out more about Patreon and some of the perks that you can receive by becoming a scrappy patron, then make sure to check the link in the description box below. All right. I hope that you have a fabulous day and as always, keep it creative.